Hey everyone, Paul Daniels here again, another daily fix. So it's a bit in a bit of a rough Sunday here. We got woken up early before nine o'clock, uh, even though the fact that we've got an eleven o'clock start on the sign. But um, yeah, that's the way some days go for you. We've had a whole bunch of other issues. Cats getting out of places they shouldn't, and um, yeah, what else happened? Bunch of stuff. Anyway, so we've got an iPhone six that's come in, and uh, on the note it says needs new battery not charging. So I plug the charger in and I get zero milliamp being drawn. And I thought, oh, okay, this looks familiar to the one that we had the other day. So sure enough, I take uh, the battery out or disconnect it, plug the DC power supply into the battery connector, straight away, three amps drawn. So I thought, ooh, maybe we've got another Wi-Fi cap, uh, CR5205, whatever it is. We know the one we're talking about. But unfortunately it's not, it's something else, so we're going to have to dig in and see what we can find. So as we can see the cap is perfectly fine. I tested, it is shorted on that rail, but that is not the fault because when I put the power in it actually gets warm down here somewhere. Now we've got the speaker and a couple of other things down here, they run off that same rail, so we're just going to take the shield off and hopefully we can find the cores. Which is running at 420 and 60 here, should be enough. I can just feel it ready to go. Yep. Alright. Nothing profoundly obvious, so we're going to put power and try a bit of alcohol. Because this is 3 amps going into it, so probably around about close to 10, uh, 2 volts, well, about 5 or 6 uh, watts. We really don't need to worry too much about needing free spray because this will show up pretty damn quick. Okay, here we go. Well, something's bobbling over there. Over here somewhere. It's strange, it's not where I thought. I thought this chip, maybe. Alright, it's this one here, but that's a problem because that's actually not going to be the culprit, I don't think. That's just. That's just telling us that the current is passing through that one, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely that. Uh, <sighs> not going to be an easy one. So what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to just take that off, short out the pins, and then see where the true fault is. Why couldn't have you just been a happy little... Well, I mean, it's a, probably a shorter cap somewhere, but... Uh, and I think I will change my nozzle down to a six. Huh, just realized I've never used this nozzle before. I can smell it's fresh and burning. Holy damn, I've got the shakes. I was going to say that looks wood damage and I realised that I've already had alcohol under there. Okay, so is it pin one top left? So if we basically just bridge any of these two here, just don't touch that one. That's the gate. Those there, they'll work. Try and honour Jason here, Jason Fulmer, and use as little flux as possible. Yeah, they'll do. Okay, yeah, let's see if we can do a nice job. Like that. That's really shonky, but should do the job. It's funny, you look at it like this now, and you think, I can't see anything. And then when you do find out which one it really is, you look at it and you go, oh, well, that was really obvious. At least, that happens fairly often. So I'm going to have to guess that maybe this was just dropped. Alright, board's cool enough now. 
Yeah, given the amount of power it's producing, it should burn my finger quite well. If I find it. Let's go brush over. Nothing there. Okay, we're doing about three and a half watts. So it is enough. Should produce a finger burner. Sometimes you gotta let these things. Okay, I can starting to feel something up here. Let's get that off. I don't know why my nerves are shaking today. I think half of it's because I've been dealing with people I don't want to deal with today. Um, like people who try to barter you out of your work. You know, you, you set a price and then they're like, oh no, how about this? And you're like, no, it's a, the price is the price. It's like, I can't go down to the supermarket and barter have a little respect, particularly on a Sunday. I mean, come on. Well, uh, making a right real mess of this shield. Sometimes I can peel these off and no problems at all. Other times it's a train wreck like this. Absolute train wreck. I like to keep some of the rubber goo, whatever it is, on the um, frame. It seems to help put it back together. Let's see if we've got anything obvious in here yet. There's a bit of grit in there. I right, guess we'll just try with the power again and see what vaporizes the alcohol. Oh no, it's the Wi Fi module. No, it's this fellow. Or is it something in here? I want to blame the PMIC, but it's... I'm not convinced. In fact, I'm feeling heat everywhere. Okay, maybe it's under the CPU shield. Okay, here we go again. Yeah, we're getting closer now somewhere. Something down here. There we go. I think our culprit is one of these guys. That looks like some balls popping out there too. Alright, we'll cut that overfill a little bit away and I think we might have our winner. It's a pretty good example of how two things having same symptoms can actually be completely different causes. I mean I suppose you could argue that the cause is still the same in the sense that they're both short but uh, yeah, you know, one was liquid damage, and this one is something else. And also a completely different cap, and further down the chain. The first thing we're going to try is just hit that with... Somehow I don't think it's going to happen how I'm hoping. I was sort of hoping to liberate those balls from the short, but I'm actually just creating more. <laughs> I'm just trying to slowly knock the solder away from that area. So I get a little bit on my tip and then take it away. Clean the tip, take it away. I think that might have cleared it now. Uh, doesn't look like it, but we do have some balls still floating in there. Okay, so you're out. So there's one at the back here. 
Now I'm being real careful because I don't want to knock that backlight driver. Okay, I think the cap has actually split at the back. So we're going to take that off. So the best way to get this off, well, I don't want to use hot air. It's a little bit close. Um, so I'm going to... I don't think Jester's method is going to work in this case again. Listen, nothing against the method, it just isn't applying in this situation. Her method's perfectly good in many scenarios, just not this one. Naturally, I just made it worse because I flicked it the wrong way. There we go. See if our short's gone, with the beeper if it is. Alright, short has gone. I'm still kind of curious what happened there. I'm really annoyed I lost that cap. I'm fairly sure they're all on the same uh, parallel rails there, but unfortunately I do not have a proper board view for the iPhone 6. I do have for quite a, the other, a lot of the other iPhones, but the 6 is just a. the one I have looks like it was iPhone 6 version 0.02 it was most definitely not a current version let's plug in the power and see if it still boils over or if we even get any current surge we'll check to see the current 6 and I'm plugged in and we've got 12 milliamps so we have cleared the short it is all good so I guess the question now is do we put ourselves through the drama of adding that cap on and I'm thinking we should I'm just a little worried about heating things up too much so I'll see if I can gently clear away some of the overfill it's always a bit of a problem with these glass chips I am being very gentle here much easier to take an extra minute than to have to go and redo that whole thing I am undoubtedly going way over the top pedantic here, but you have to remember this is not my daily sort of work. Um, you know, I work on MacBooks and PC laptops and things like that, but iPhone boards is not my daily. So I don't have sufficient, uh, how could you say, I don't have sufficient experience in the feel of how things are going to behave to know where, you know, what sort of leeway I've got on everything. Now yeah, that was dumb. That was dumb because I shocked the parts a bit much there. I should have waited longer before hitting it with the alcohol. Uh, I think I can probably get away with that. So what doesn't help is the hot air is going to, going to get obstructed by this and that. Uh, this is going to be fun. So just flux this up a bit more. Just make sure we really do have a good level of leaded solder on there rather than some crazy hybrid alloy. And I've got to work out what that value is. Uh, so that's a um, 10 microfarad, 6.3402. So it's not the one we had the other day. If only I hadn't lost that one that I threw away the other day, I could have used that. Guess we'll have to use another. Okay, let's add a little tinkle of flux.
And hope to sweep Bridget we don't make a mess of this. Okay, we're down. Should be good. I was angling the hot air in quite sideways and that way it was sort of being channeled into those pads rather than blowing across rather than blowing across the top of everything here. That was with a 9mm nozzle, amusingly. <laughs> right. Okay, well, let's uh, see if this thing even works. Let's see, here we go. Uh huh. We're good. So there you go. Another shorted cap, but this time was a little different. We're going to have to now put the uh, MOSFET back on there so that that gets controlled properly. Uh, Ah, oh, that's going to be no fun, putting that MOSFET back on. Anyway, at least we know it works. Right, we just have to re-ball this now. Did I crack that? No, it's just a piece of junk. It's a good looking chip. I've got pin one there. Yeah, I'm a little uncoordinated here. Yep, pin one. It's good. Put on a little bit of flux again. Off the toothpick. Well, that's a, that's a huge blob. That's plenty. And looks like we've been unfortunate enough to pick up a hair in there. So try to get that out. Good. And we are uh, sit. Can be a little deceptive there. You saw a couple of times it started shifting, and you thought, "Oh, maybe that's it. Oh, maybe that's it." But uh, it took about three or four shifts before it finally sat down. And I think that was just a case of each ball was melting one at a time. <laughs> the nice thing is, very little um, flux, flux floating around there. Thank you very much, Jason. Your toothpick style. We probably should visually inspect those balls too. And they look perfectly good. I'm not sure if the solder that holds the shields on has a very high uh, hysteresis in its uh, states for the temperature of transitions but it sure does take a while before it cools back down enough that you can let go of it okay that, that's good now yep it's just starting to shift back now Okay, that's good.
we've got a, another happy customer. Now to clean up my desk. So there we go. That was a bit of a different one. We thought it might have been one of those little Wi-Fi caps, but not this time. Instead, we had to dig in a bit deeper and find out where the real cause was. So the important thing to note there was how that um, MOSFET transistor that came up initially, highlighting as if it was the problem. That's a pretty common trap for anyone going through this the first time. It's very, very unusual for those to die in a way that would cause that sort of issue on their own. So it's almost always a real short further on down the line. So this customer's going to be happy. They came in early this morning and they're a bit distraught about it because you know, all their data's on there. And now they'll have their phone back. Obviously, I'm going to tell them to make a backup before they do anything further. Let's hope they do that. All right. Well, thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.